Hi, welcome to West End Talks. Hi. Um, my name's Graham. Uh, this is our first video here on the website, and I'm thrilled to have Daniel Max Sand, who last year played Peter in Bear the Pop Opera at the Falls. Welcome, Daniel. Hi, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Not a problem. Thanks for, for joining us. Uh, genuinely thrilled when you, you got back and said you would you would take part. Uh, obviously, as I, as I mentioned, you played Peter uh, in the, the West End version of Bear. Yeah. Which was on at the vaults in Waterloo. So technically not the West End if we're listening to officials, but <laughs> it's West End enough for me. It was uh, London. Counts for us. Yes, it does. Count, it does <laughs> definitely. For the, for the theatre fans, it counts. Um, I think what we'll do, um, I, there's a way I want to start every uh, interview, and it's just ask a couple of questions just about you rather than the productions. Okay. So obviously, first thing, how did you get into musical theatre? What was your background? Um, I actually wasn't going to do musical theatre at all. Um, I was, <laughs> was going to be a music teacher. Um, and then I was in secondary school and my parents moved to Suffolk um, from London. And there was a, I was quite, sh I was a really shy kid. Um, and then my parents said, oh, they're doing like a, a version of The Wizard of Oz, this Amdam Society, you should go and audition to be in the ensemble because they wanted to make me more confident. Um, and I was like, no, I'm, I don't think so. And she said, just go, just please try. So I went along um, and they ended up casting me as the Tin Man. <laughs> and, I, and I was really shocked. And then I just remember I got on stage that first time and everything changed. I was just like, okay, this is, this is what I want to do forever. So I changed all my uni options, all my degree options, and I switched to a musical theatre degree and then haven't looked back since. Brilliant. That sounds, Wizard of Oz is a classic as well, like to yeah. start off with. That's certainly a classic first production. Um, obviously the next one was, a, obviously the, the Wizard of Oz was your first production. Yeah. But what was your first main production like in college or yeah what was your uh, well, at, at college my first production was the wild party by andrew lipper all right yeah i played mm -hmm. mr black um i love that show it's so good i really wish someone would do that version of it in london because it's, it's so jazzy and it's so good because the lacuja version gets done quite a lot just not the mm -hmm. lipper version um so that was my first show at college my first professional show out of college was um elegies for angels punks and raging queens Oh, yeah. oh, that's a good one. That, yeah, did that at the Theatro Technis. But yeah, that was my first one and I loved it. it was, it's, again, it's another amazing show. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, so what I'll do now, we'll go into the, the, we have some fans that have asked questions okay. through our social media. <laughs> um, we ha you have fans, Daniel, don't worry, you have fans. <laughs> it's um, <laughs> hey, so our, our first question uh, is, comes from Elaine uh, on Twitter. I remember so Elaine. She <laughs> asks, as Peter was your dream role, uh, what did you love about his character and what was your biggest challenge when we're doing the role was concerned? What I loved, I think what I love most about him is that it was a real person. It wasn't like a stereotype. Do you know what I mean? So a lot of times in theatre, um, gay roles can be so stereotypical which is fine, I, I'm happy to play those because there, there are those sides of us that we all have that real camp side, that real jazzy side, which I love, <laughs> exactly. We all <laughs> every now and then, you know? But also I loved that it was, it was a three-dimensional character of like, of a normal person. So, and, it, and for me as well, I related to it quite a lot because being a, a younger guy at school, being in the closet and like having these feelings of, for boys and stuff, being an out and proud gay guy myself now, um, I think it was, it was a role that I found really empowering and something I wanted to share with everyone. So I was, I was so honored to play it. I, I mean, I didn't realize it had such a huge kind of following as it did. Um, and I'm just glad that people were happy with how I did it, to be honest. <laughs> um, I think the hardest thing was, is that because it was such a real character, I had to go through so many emotions. Like Peter went from really happy, like to really like struggling through everything, to trying to tell his mum that he was gay, to then having his boyfriend say he didn't want to come out. And there were so many levels. And so I think in act two, I had to cry four times. I think it was in the end. It, we worked out. A few, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was emotionally draining. Um, and it was really hard to kind of, I had, cause I threw myself into it every time. 
So to then at the end of the show, you just kind of felt this, this weird kind of emptiness. Um, and that was the hardest bit was to then go back to normal life and then pick up again the next day and go back into Peter. I think that yeah. was the biggest challenge. I can, I'm not an actor, I don't perform, but I can completely understand that. Yeah, I can see how that would be a challenge, definitely. Um, so that's great. I, obviously, I, I saw it, uh, as I said before. Um, I have seen it, and I think I, that I didn't, I'll be truthful, I didn't know it until before I came and saw it. I didn't know anything about Bayer. I didn't, I didn't know the musical. Uh, I got a ticket from a friend for my birthday. Uh, right. and came to see the musical. I thought, oh, it's an LGBT musical. I'm gay myself. So I thought, I'll come and see it. Thinking it was going to be this cheesy, <laughs> as you said, because um, I like to go in blind to musicals. Okay. Mm -hmm. Unless it's Mamma Mia or things like that, yeah. that you're going to know. But um, musicals like this, where it's not, it's music written for that musical, I like to go in blind. I don't like to listen to the soundtrack or yeah. anything like that beforehand. Mm -hmm. I know quite a few um, people do that actually. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely it's better. It, it means you, you, it's more personal. You remember yeah. it more. Um, but definitely, it, it was a shock when I thought, "Oh, this is really emotional." Like, and you can connect to it. And and as you said, Peter was a real, a real person. Obviously, yeah. he wasn't real, but it, Peter never actually existed. But he was real as in, it was written real. as a real person. Yeah. yeah. So next one, Claire on Facebook uh, asks. The scene between you and Joe, Joe, yeah. for anyone that doesn't know, played your mum in yeah. the show, uh, on the, the phone. Um, that was such an emotional scene, she says. What were you thinking about during that song? Like, how did you get into the, the mind frame? Um, yeah, so that scene, in that scene, Peter's decided to come out to his mum. He's decided that he can't hide anymore, so he gives her a phone call and tries to come up to her during the phone call and during the whole phone call she just shuts him down she doesn't want to she doesn't want to hear it basically um so it's yeah and it's real emotional um I think everyone asks me this like even my mum my own mum asked me this because when I came out my mum and dad were great like they never I didn't have any issues at all they're, they're amazing parents I couldn't ask for better parents so I think for me, I still, but still coming out, I still had that fear, do you know what I mean? Of being like, oh, is my family gonna accept this? Is, which is silly. Like for now, I think, I don't think we should have to come out now really because it's, it's you're not doing anything different, you know? You're just you, it's just who you're choosing to love. Like, and I don't think that should be an issue now. So, but I went back to those emotions I felt before telling them. So that was what I always pictured. And I just kind of imagined telling someone and being so afraid of what that answer could be. Cause like, there are so many people that don't get the answers and the response that I got from my parents. Um, and so I kind of tried to put myself in their sort of place. Um, yeah, and it was really emotional. I just remember a lot of fans like, of the show did come up to me after and they did say that scene resonated with them most because it was, real for them and they didn't have that connection with their parents so and so it was heartbreaking so at the same time I kind of did it for them you know no that definitely I, I, I second that opinion that they definitely resonated but I don't think I was the same as you my parents love like were yeah. great uh, literally my mother was telling me something I didn't know I'm like <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that was literally an answer yeah same. um so I'm like okay um but it did still resonate with me because I had it but I had it with my biological father Okay. So it was that that was so it was slightly different, but the same sort of thing. It was a phone call. Yeah. Down with the rest of it, and um, so that definitely resonated with me. And I think that scene and the scene which we'll come to in a minute, but with Stacey Francis. Yeah. Um, with God, don't make no trash. Yeah. I, I love that scene. That at school, and it was obviously it wasn't re that religious, but it was the same sort of thing. She yeah. Was fine and everything. So, and um, that one, but we'll come to that in a minute. Uh, we'll talk <laughs> shortly um andy on twitter mm -hmm. uh, he asked i think he knows a bit about you because he asks your training obviously was a ba honors degree course yeah with limited contact time at colchester uh essex do you feel the question that he actually asks is do you feel you missed out on a drama school experience uh, and training if so what was the hardest thing to get you to where you are now um 
I I don't regret going to Colchester at all, um, doing, a, doing it rather than going to drama school. I mean, at the time for me, drama school wasn't really an option because I couldn't afford it. Um, and my family couldn't afford it. So there was no, no way I was going to be able to do it. Um, and like I said, I did change my options so last minute as well that for me, it was going to be one of my best options. Um, I remember walking into Colchester on the, on the like show day when you go around to see things. And I was just like, this is, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. Um, Colchester, it taught me loads. Like it taught me so much. Like I think the difference is with, drama school and the BA honours that I did um, is that we did get to do so much performance so I did I think in every year I did about three three musicals a year so I learned stagecraft so much more than I did having the contact with the industry it's, it's kind of like a double-edged sword because like on the one hand I got to perform so much but at the same time we didn't have the the connections to the industry so for me, coming out of it um, now, it's, it has taken me a minute to get to where I am, but, <laughs> but um, it's because I think still a lot of people do look at your CV and go, oh, they didn't go to Arts Ed, they didn't go to Mountview, so why should I call them into the room? Um, so it is harder for me to knock down those doors and get seen by people um, because that, for me, that does still exist in this casting industry, sadly. Um, but it doesn't stop me. If anything, it drives me more to show people that I can do it and that I am just as good as anyone that's been to a drama school. Um, I think where you learn, it, it's, just how, it's just the level that you get from each school. It doesn't matter where you go. It's what you get out of it at the end, I think. That makes sense. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Uh, and that's a good answer. Uh, Ellie uh, on Twitter mm -hmm. asks, she goes back to, to Bea and asks, do you have a favourite line from the show? Favourite line? I think my favourite line that I got to say, because obviously I, a lot of my character was quite sad. <laughs> yeah. So I think my favourite line I got to say was a bit of comic relief was when I was high on the brownies at the party. <laughs> and, I, and I got to say, I wish your piñata was that big. I think that was my, my funnest line to say. Um, in terms of fun lines in the show, though, anything Nadia said was funny. Like, apart from her, when she does her, her ballad songs, all her lines were funny. And also, I think one of my favourite moments is during um, the first time Peter has the vision when he, the, the Virgin Mary comes to him and it's his teacher as the Virgin Mary. And it's when the two angels are, are talking about her when she's walking away. <laughs> that's my favorite bit is when they're walking away and they're, and they're going well they she forgets it's not all about her and then she hears them and turns around and it that killed me every time it i found it so hard not to laugh whilst i was on the stage <laughs> yeah i think uh, actually that brings us nicely into to stacy actually um obviously she was the biggest name in the show yeah. uh, i don't think i'm a strong believer then you don't need a name completely to sell a show but i think if it works it works and yeah. I think Stacey completely worked for that part. I don't know about you, but personally, as a fan, she was fantastic for that part. I, I knew her from X Factor uh, when mm -hmm. she did X Factor USA. Yeah. Uh, so I followed her from back then. Uh, so as soon as I heard she was in that, I was like, this is going to be great. But she's so sassy. I don't yeah. know, but like off stage, I'm sure she's the same. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on stage, she definitely, she, I felt she played the part brilliantly. Yeah. Um, what was your experience with, with Stacey and Mark as well? Because obviously Mark was in it as well. Yeah. Um, so Stacey, uh, I, I'm the same as you. I was obsessed with her since <laughs> I saw her on X Factor. Um, and I remember seeing her being like, oh my God, this, this voice, this person is insane. Um, and I do remember in that rehearsal room on that first day when she sang that song, everyone was just like, like there was, it, we were gobsmacked. Um, she, she is, yeah, she is sassy on and off stage, but she has a fire and, and I love that about her personally. Like, um, she is a star. Like, she has that drive. She has that kind of, she's the same as me. She wants to get where she wants to be and she won't stop until she gets there, you know? Um, and she's got a massive heart as well. Like, that's, I think that's the side you, you see it in the show because obviously she plays a sister, but she is kind of basically the sister. Like she has this real sassy side, but she also has this huge heart. Like she was a big, 
she was a big support for me during the show. I just remember, uh, I know we've got, we were talking about you mostly, but I just remember right at the end when we're obviously standing innovation, every time I saw it, there was a standing mm-hmm. innovation at the end, without a doubt. Um, I glared at anybody that was still sitting, unless they were unable to stand, that's different. <laughs> but um, we were always in the front row, we always got the front row, that I was almost always in the same seat. Yeah. Because um, it was a weird setup for seating, but that's a different yeah. story. Um, I've never seen anything like it. But we were always in the, almost, almost the same seat. But the very first time I saw it, I remember, we'll come to the end in, later in, in the interview, but when we were standing, obviously I was not a dry eye. <laughs> I, I don't know if sobbing's the right word. Completely <laughs> gone. I think it's more like it. <laughs> um, I just remember when you were taking your bows, Stacey putting her hand down and, and, and taking my hand. Aww. And I thought that doesn't happen in, in norm like normal shows like that wouldn't okay. you wouldn't have that interaction. That's she broke the, the the third wall if you like, but in a good way. It yeah. was, the show was finished. The show was finished yeah. at that point. It was exactly. just your final bows. But it was it was just nice that she was she was consoling and I'm like and I'll never forget that. Yeah. Uh, I that's, think that's what was so nice about that venue as well, was because you were so close to us that you it was so like you were in it, do you know what I mean? You were yeah. part of the story, and I loved that about that. Well, during the scenes of like the, when you were in the, the church and stuff, right at start and felt, we felt over the congregation. Yeah. Exactly. That's how I felt anyway. That's certainly how I felt. Yeah. We were part of the congregation, we were part of the parties and the, the yeah. wave and all the rest of it. Um, I think we, me and Stacey had a, a good relationship. You could tell, like, I don't know if you did you see the very last performance? Yes, I was at closing night. Yes. That's when me and, and that's that song where me and Stacey just couldn't continue. Hi. Where we just sat and cried <laughs> during the last I number. didn't see much of the closing performance, yeah. as in, I think, most of... Yeah, <laughs> most of the tears, yeah. But I remember, and I just remember, because that was a real emotion. That was, that was her saying to me, like, go and do it, you know? And that was us being, like, supportive of each other. It was a real, real moment, and I loved that. No, definitely. That was the, the, the first night, and then, obviously, closing night, or, or is it, like, go with me, definitely. Yeah. Um, Simon, uh, on Facebook, asks, what was it like? I think you've kind of answered this, but we'll ask it just in case uh, to cover for Simon. Uh, what was it like to play the lead in a, a very true-to-life LGBT plus story? It, it was an honour, <laughs> in all honesty. Um, <laughs> like I said, it was, uh, it's a dream. It's a dream part. And to, to represent my community as well um, in a story like that is incredible. Like, I was really touched. And I was, like I said, I was touched by the letters, the messages that I would get from people saying how moved they were by it. And that made it all worth it, you know? No, definitely, that's, yeah. Um, What was your favorite song in the show? Not necessarily you performing, it could be the one you performed, but it was. (laughs) Um, My favorite song in the show probably is, oh, it's a really tough choice, that one. Um, I always really loved, I do love doing the rave as a number, like because I think Stuart's choreography was insanely good. Like it was so much fun to do. Like I, and sometimes I've always kind of been nervous of choreography. Like even though I can dance, um, you never know what it's going to be like. And but Stuart's choreography was insane. So the rave was amazing. Um, but in terms of an actual song, I did love Wonderland again for the choreography, but also Bradley. Like his rapping skills. Yes. It, it, the whole number was so fun and it was always such a fun number to be in. So I think that's probably my favourite. No, that's definite, yeah. Um, Sam wants to know, uh, was there, he's on Instagram, uh, was there any backstage gossip that you can tell us? <laughs> Lots of backstage <laughs> gossip. Um, anything, anything you're allowed to tell us on camera? Um, I can't really think of anything, really. I mean, it was, it was a very very intense production um but there's so many heights and emotions uh in terms of gossip god no there's nothing like major that i would share really i guess um we used to have a little puppy that come and visit us backstage because one of the girls got a puppy and so she used to bring him and visit we used to play with him a lot of the time backstage (laughs) i think i think backstage it was manic it was a I obviously I stage doored after stage doored. You can't really stage door yeah. the vaults, but you waited in the bar for you coming yeah. out of the dressing rooms. Um, what is your view on that? Like for stage door, and that's a good question actually. What what's I I'm 
think if the fans have taken the time to stay there and want to meet you, then you should meet them. Personally, that's my, like I st- I was there so late sometimes just trying to talk to people. Um, because for me as well, it's the fans that drive the show. Like I, and the reason we were telling the story was to spread that awareness, you know, because of the ending of the show, obviously, um, is to spread what the story is about. So for the fans to come and want, for them to want to take the time to talk to little old me, who I don't think I'm a, I'm a no one, in my opinion, <laughs> like, for them to want to spend the time to talk to me, I'm going to give them the time. You know, I think it's, it's really moving and it's really humbling, personally. Yeah, definitely. I'll correct you with saying you, I don't think you're a little old, like, nobody. <laughs> that's, that's definite. You're, you're Daniel Mac Shand, you know. Um, <laughs> you're definitely a name on the West End checklist. Thanks. Definitely now. Um, playing, you, you played the biggest, one of the biggest LGBT characters in musical history. Like, yeah. without a doubt. Uh, you've got places, people like Kinky Boots, and yeah. you've got musicals like that, but they are what you would class as the, cl- the stereotypical gays. Yeah. There's not many LGBT characters that are true to life, and Peter's definitely, and Jason to a certain extent as well, yeah. but Peter is, is definitely one that definitely is, is true to life. Uh, Mark on Instagram wants to know what is your pre-show ritual? Do you have any pre-show rituals? Anything you um, do? It kind of changes every show. So I don't really have um, like a set kind of ritual. Um, I guess I do, I do like steam before and things like that. But I, in terms of like, we, actors are quite superstitious. So lots of people will do similar things, but I tend to, my problem is, I remember when I did a show called The Full Monty, um, and what I did was, I remember we'd go on stage, <laughs> they'd call us to the curtain, and the first night I did to go to the toilet, and he did a wee. And I was like, so I ran off during the, during the overture, and then came back on for the show, and because of that, I had to do that every night. Like, that was it, otherwise I thought I would have a bad performance. So you get into routines like that. So like, I think in Bear, what I would do is I would always do the warm up with everyone. And then I remember I would sneak off to another room and try and sing a part of the song and then come back. And I felt like if I didn't get the chance to do that, I was like, oh my God, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I'm not gonna be able to do it. <laughs> so I guess that's kind of my ritual. <laughs> that's great, no. Um, that's, that's strange how you've got different ones. Uh, Cause I, I, I've talked to a lot of, of theatre uh, performers backstage, not backstage, sorry not in this sort of performance way, <laughs> way but like at stage doors and stuff and, and talked about pre ritual rituals and they always have, as you said, the same ones, but it's quite interesting to know that you've got different ones. Yeah, it just, change, it, I think it just changes during the show. I, I think that's just my mind. I yeah. think I suddenly do something and I'm like, oh, I need to do that every night now. I to do that. And I, yeah, I don't think I have like a set. Kind it of makes thing. sense. It does make sense, definitely. <laughs> uh, so couple more. Peter uh, on Twitter is asking, he says, being gay himself, for a lot of men, uh, or a lot of gay men, should I, should I, should I say, kissing a straight man is, is a fantasy of theirs. Uh, yeah. We're not going any deeper than that, don't worry. What was it like to do it on a nightly basis? Because obviously <laughs> Darren, who played, is it Darren, sorry? Dara. That, yeah, Dara. Uh, yeah, that played uh, Jason. Uh, your love interest in the show was yeah. is straight. So what was it? Obviously, that's a... Um, <laughs> well, uh, I don't necessarily think it was a fantasy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I am a married man, so... Um, but, I mean, at the time, you kind of just... It's not you, if you know what I mean. So it's uh, in rehearsals, it's really weird, obviously, the first time having to kiss this random kind of straight boy that you don't know. I mean, you had to be, we had to be so intimate from literally day one. Um, so obviously, and there is an adrenaline rush there, of course, on that first day. Um, but then it just kind of becomes your job. So when you become the, the character as such, you're that character at that time. So it wasn't, it wasn't so much Daniel in my head. It wasn't so much me making out with Dara. It was Peter making out with Jason. So yeah. it was kind of worked like that, really. I mean, you can't say it's not fun, obviously, but, you know. <laughs> both, you, let's be honest, you're both good looking, so, uh, <laughs> um, certainly, was, yes. Uh, say no more than that, because it's uh, family friendly. So obviously <laughs> you started, uh, the production started in June of last year. Uh, when did the actual 
when did it start? When did the first day that you found out and casting and stuff? Talk us through that. Uh, rehearsals were four weeks. So that was four weeks before that. So that was top of, that was like May. Um, oh yeah, because I was in there for my birthday. <laughs> and then I think the casting was like three, four weeks before that. Oh, so it was only just... It was, it was a very short process. Very short. Yeah, it was. Because I know short. it kind of came out, there wasn't even any... Because I'm quite good at knowing sort of rumours, if you yeah. like, uh, of, of theatre land. And there certainly, there wasn't many even rumours until yeah. it was it was Good almost fun. announced. It was about a week before it was announced yeah. that the rumours started flying that Bear was coming to, to London. Yeah, because um, it was announced just before the casting came out. Yeah, so it was only a couple of, like, usually it's, because, well, we knew about, like, for example, Holo Dolly, we knew about that months and months and yeah. months ago, obviously. Um that's it's opening in August, yeah. um, so we we had the, the that we knew that probably last year that Hollow Dolly was coming. But as yeah. Bea, such a big, especially on the LGBT scene, such a big musical, there was no real kind of word, which was good for the produ- in a producer yeah. sense because they don't want the the rumours because that built up the hype quicker. Yeah, I mean the the, the ball rolled quicker for definitely. Yeah. Um, so going on from that, obviously. It had been on West. It had been in London once before. Is that correct? I'm right in saying. Yeah, it was been, like it was on in Greenwich. Yeah, Greenwich. I'm sure. It, I'm, I'm sure it was Greenwich. I did look it up. I think it was about five years before. Yeah, so it has been on once, but this was like the first kind of West End production of it. Mm. But it has been. There's been off off Broadway production, yeah. and then obviously the, the LA, which is probably the best known production of it. Um, the other, the two most kind of famous ones, but with this production. Uh, in London, I'm right in saying that there was the ending. Uh, we're coming to the the ending of the musical now. It was changed, and I'm talking in respects of the tree. Yeah. So that was that was added in. So that was with that was Julian Stewart. Uh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, the tree. Um, that was if Julian Stewart uh, decided to add that in. Obviously, I think they had to get approval for it, but the writers said, "Yeah, of course." Um, so what we did was. At the end, oh, I mean, we're going to give spoilers anyway, aren't we? Because it's not, it's not on it's, now. It's not on now, so yeah, you can give spoilers. So, uh, at the end of the, the musical, um, we're doing a production of Romeo and Juliet, and um, Jason's character was playing Romeo, and during one of the scenes, he takes an overdose of drugs, um, and in, eventually he ends up dying in my arms on the stage. Um, and then he gets carried out, and obviously it's it was... A real heartbreaking moment because it's about teen suicide and about because basically just before that he goes to the priest and says I want to come out and the priest tells him no don't don't do it don't accept who you are you can change it's fine and he can't handle that so he of course takes his own life um so what they did was at the end of the show to make it real when we're doing the graduation scene we would all have these cards and they on the cards we had real people, real LGBTQ plus community members that had taken their own lives um, for whatever reason and we would hang their name, we would say their name and we would hang it on the tree in respect to them um, and it was heartbreaking <laughs> like uh, you could, people could go up to the tree after and read the messages and it would tell their story um, oh it makes me emotional just talking about that uh, actually <laughs> yeah so yeah so it was but it was a beautiful moment because some of those kids didn't get to tell their stories. And so that's what made the show so important. Yeah, because there was, there was kids, both male, female, transgender, you name it. There was, yeah. it, 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 it took the, it was, although it was a, a gay story, Bear was about gay two and gay men, yeah. that part of it was LGBT plus. It, it brought in everybody. Um, and it brought in all ages. There yeah. was... All the way from there was an eleven year old. I think there that was, was the youngest, yeah. wasn't there? It was an eleven. Right, year old. right up to to eighteen, twenty, twenty yeah. odds. There was a couple of them. So it, it was, yeah, that really hurt home. because uh, yeah. I wasn't expecting that. Like no. my friend who was there the first night with me, he had seen the LA production, not any LA, but he had seen it on on YouTube, um, and so he knew that the end, and he knew that that Jason did pass away at the end so he was ready for that part yeah. it still did hit him but it, he was ready for it whereas yeah. I wasn't ready for anything because I hadn't seen it but 
he certainly wasn't ready for it. Like, he didn't understand what the tree was when we walked in because yeah. the tree's obviously not in the LA production. No. no. Um, so he was like, oh, tree, what's that? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, I was yeah. totally oblivious. <laughs> I didn't know anything. Um, but he had seen it and he, he was not ready for that. Like, he's not LGBT. He's, he's yeah. straight. Um, but he was not ready for the, the tree at all. Um, he's just as emotional as I am. But anyway, uh, moving on. Because I can feel myself <laughs> going. Yeah. Um, kind of finishing the talk about bear on a slightly lighter note. Mm-hmm. Um, one question I have always wanted to know, and yeah. this is from me. Okay. I think, but I think everybody kind of wants to know slightly, is at the end of Act One. Yeah. Uh, Jason ends up in a a very interesting costume change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What would like to know, I'm sure the fans, I definitely want to know, but what the fans want to know is, was, was he stuffed? I mean, as far as I know, he wasn't, but I, I'm not in his pants, so. <laughs> we that, always, I, you hear it at, at interval, that's one of the questions yeah, in the audience. You I, hear uh, it. That's a question that you have to ask him. I think he knows the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> but we're, we're trying, we're trying. Uh, <laughs> so... That's us kind of finished with the, the musical, uh, the bear questions, but moving on to a couple of questions just to ask regarding, that we're going to ask everybody. Um, we're going to ask everybody, no matter who they are. So first one is, what's your favourite musical theatre song? It doesn't have to be one you perform, just your favourite musical theatre song. Okay. Um, oh, it's, it's really hard to choose because obviously there's so many. Um, I think... I think for me, my favourite is You and Me from Book of Mormon. Um, I think it's because it is, it's like a male health of song. So it reminds me of like a male version of Defying Gravity. And I love it. And I love singing it. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, I can, I can ask that. I never thought, I never put that connection together. But yeah, <laughs> it is like a male uh, Defying Gravity. It's like a dream show. <laughs> that kind of brings us on to the next question then. What is your dream role? My dream, like in all of theatre. play any role in theatre, so it doesn't have to be musical theatre. Any role, I, I, it would be Elder Price, for sure. Like, it's definitely on my bucket list. It's such an incredible show. It's so funny. Um, like, usually, I normally play comedy characters, and so Bear was, like, one of the first kind of serious roles I've done. Um, so it would definitely be Elder Price. I think it's such an incredible part. I could see you. I could see you in the white shirt and the black tie. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> As a, it's it's like, Book of Mormon is a fantastic show. It's yeah. very to the bone. Yeah, well, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Moments, uh, a lot of them. But uh, I remember the, the first so time you see it, I'm going, really? Are yeah, really getting away with this on stage. <laughs> um, but yes, um, Dre, you if you could play, what's your dream gender bend role? If you could play any other female role. Okay. Um, I always say this as well, um, is that one of my, the roles I would actually swap to, I'm never going to be able to play it, for obvious reasons when I say it, um, but it's Effie in Dreamgirls. <laughs> mm, that's yes. It's that, it's the, my favourite one, is the number um, where she, before the section before she goes into And I'm Telling You, that whole number is yeah. my favourite and I love doing it. Yeah, no, I can, I can understand that one, yes. I can <laughs> second you on that one, darling, yes. Uh, what is your all-time top five musicals if you had to pick five it doesn't have to be in them you don't have to have been in them okay um oh there's too many uh right definitely bear's gonna be in there it's got to be definitely in the top five um and mormon has to go in there as well for sure because i love it uh then i would choose I really love, like, I really love like, contemporary musicals as well. So like, I really love like, Next to Normal is definitely in my top five. I Absolutely. want that to come over so badly. Um, and last five years, Jason Robert Brown, anything by Jason Robert Brown could go in there because I adore him. And my fifth one would be A New Brain by William Finn. So he did like falsettos and all of that as well. Mm-hmm. I adore it. So good. I don't think I've ever seen that one, but that's, I'll, I'll add that one to my it's, it's never been on in London. No, but I... brain. So it, it needs to come out. Like, if you look it up, they did a, a new version of it in off Broadway recently with Anna Geister and uh, Jonathan Groff. 
Oh, they? Oh, yeah. yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. I and that, yeah. recording is so good. It's like, it's like a dream, that's a dream role, actually. To play Gordo in that is a dream role. Yeah, well, let's see. The dream roles are, 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 are rolling in. <laughs> I want to play everything. <laughs> so, uh, certainly after Bear, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised you've not got them all kind of chatting at your door. Um, <laughs> so I'm sure you've heard of, of the, the, the craze Ice Bucket Challenge. Yeah. Um, the, so we're not going to ask you to pour an ice bucket over your head, don't panic. <laughs> uh, but the whole point in that was you were to do it and then nominate somebody at the end. So what we're trying to start is a, a West End Talks nomination. Uh, so at the end of each interview, we're going to ask the interviewers we, to name somebody uh, that will do it and then tag them on social media. Um, so at the end of this, what I'd like you to ask you to do is to nominate somebody mm -hmm. uh, to tag somebody, sorry, in a post saying, just basically saying, you've just done your talk with SN Talks, yeah. now it's your turn, something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so who would you choose and why? And it could be anyone. It could be anyone at all, yeah, on, off stage, it can be anyone. Theatre related, okay. obviously. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> my mum. Um, <laughs> Talk to mum if you want. <laughs> no, could you imagine? She sounds lovely. <laughs> she would never do it. She's like, she would never do anything like that. Um, I'm going to choose, he's from the show as well, um, I'm going to choose Tom Scanlon, uh, he was in Bear with me, he's one of my closest friends now, um, he is an incredible performer, like, honestly, he's astounding, like, what he can do blows my mind, he's an incredible dancer, incredible singer, incredible actor, he's good at all, so he's been in, like, Kinky Boots, he's been in uh, Cabaret recently, the tour that was just on, and obviously Bear, um, and he's just an amazing guy, amazing heart, amazing everything. You should definitely interview him. We're certainly trying. Yes, we'll try. But if you if you can get on the bandwagon and tag us tag him in a post, that would be great. Well. <laughs> oh, that's that's brilliant. Um, so thank you very much. F lastly, uh, just before you go, we have created a kind of best bits, West End talks best bits for you. Uh, okay. Just some pictures, uh, literally, just of the show. It's it's all press ones, uh, mm -hmm. as far as I'm aware. I don't think there's any that shouldn't have been taken uh, from the audience. I'm hoping not, but uh, <laughs> certainly none by me. That's definite. Okay. Uh, so hopefully this should work. There we go. So just some pictures. I know you've probably seen them all before, but just also to, to show the, the, the people at home, I think it's more of the, the people that haven't seen it. Uh, so this is obviously the poster you, you I love mentioned to me before the interview that this was your friend that designed this. Friend yeah, it actually was. Yeah, a friend of mine actually designed this poster. Um, I think I love it. I think it's an incredible version of it because there's so many posters of Bear yeah. that people have made, like fan arts, and I think this just kind of capsulates everything because of the kind of subtleness of the rainbow in the two boys and stuff and the separation of the cross. I think it's such a good poster. Yeah, you've, you've also got the iconic one, the LA one, which is the window, which is the yeah. stained glass window. Yeah. Uh, but I think this one, it, it gives it a new lease of life. It gives it a more modern twist. It, it brings a more LGBT side of things into it yeah. and obviously the Catholic as well. Okay. Um, with the, the cross, that definitely. But then, obviously, this is the, the, the cast for anyone that doesn't know. This was, the, this was the first day we met. Was this literally the first day you met? Literally, first day we met. So, so we like, had, where was this? Where was this taken? It was, um, it was a church in... Oh, I can't remember where it was now. It was an amazing cathedral, basically. It was stunning. And um, we, they said, oh, this is the first day. Can you all show up here with some costume items and some clothing items? And yeah, they just put us together and that was it. Right. So that's obviously, you're, a, you're down the bottom left corner. Yeah. You've got your uh, boyfriend, Jason, next yeah. to you. Yeah. Um, this is where that's my mind Lizzie, is tested. played Ivy. The what, sorry? Lizzie Emery, she played Ivy. Yep. And then the guy next to him. Yeah, Tom. I had the list. I'll need to edit this bit out, but I did have the list. But... Tom, uh, yeah. and he played. Um, and then you've got Georgie. Love it. And she was Nadia. Yeah. And then you've got Sister Chantelle, who is obviously Stacey Francis, and then Joe Nathan, who was my mum. <laughs> yeah, sure, yes. I'm but, sure. Uh, me and Lizzie actually did a show before together. We All did. right, did you? Yeah, we just finished doing Rent together. Right. <laughs> so you knew uh, you knew each other, so that's good. Yeah, it was, quite, it was really nice, actually, to have a friend in the car straight away. It oh, like, kind of makes it much, much more of an easier process. Yeah, I think that's, with every job, I think it's good to have somebody you know. Yeah. Um, that's obviously... You, just a picture hey. of you. What were you thinking there? You look, you're deep in thought. Deep in thought. <laughs> deep in thought, thinking, what have I got myself into? <laughs> uh, 
uh, that's you getting your tailing off from yeah, uh, right. the sister. Uh, that was God Makes No Trash, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, yeah. That was yeah. my favourite song in the whole show. Yeah, it's without such a, a doubt. number, for sure. Uh, it's, it's an upbeat, it's a, it's a funny, it's, it's quite heartfelt too. Yeah. Uh, at the same time, but it's just so comic. And Stacey interacts with the audience. She pointed at me a few times during the show, uh, during that yeah. song. <laughs> I'm like, are you trying to say I'm gay, darling? Um, <laughs> uh, I did come in a glittery jacket on closing night, I might add. But um, so yes, uh, I'll, I'll, this is probably one of my favourite pictures. Yeah. Uh, just this is just before uh, obviously Jason passes away. Yeah. Uh, I just told him that we can't be together. Yeah. He, he says he wants to get back together, and I said I can't. I'm like I can't do this because like the character just couldn't. My character just couldn't handle being messed around so much. Do you know what I mean? But he didn't know that Jason had obviously taken the pills. So he didn't know that Jason had taken these drugs. Yeah. So yeah, but it's a real sad moment really, because it's kind of the last moment they had together. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's why that, I love that picture so much. It's just yeah. encapsulates it. Uh, that's just cool. an interesting one, yes. In the red uh, line. <laughs> there's the, how steaminess it got. Uh, and that's just another picture, um, just of the, of the, the main cast. Yeah. Uh, you obviously had a few others. You obviously you mentioned Tom, yeah, uh, who was in it. You had Mark as well, who played the father. Yeah, um, Mark the father. It was, it was, a, um, it was an incredible cast, really. Was, I, the ca there wasn't. That's a good thing. Even the ensemble, who I think everybody had a character, didn't they? Yeah, everybody, they did. Everybody, there wasn't a, an ensemble part, if you like. Yeah. yeah. But the the ensemble of the cast, if you like, they 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 they're all important, but the the smaller parts. Even yeah. they played a big part, and they were they were great. Yeah. Like everybody had their, their moment, which was which I loved about the show. It's it's why I like those shows like that. Like because they obviously come from always the same. There's there's every cast member has their part, and yeah. even the band down to the band, even the band in this that yeah. they were up in the, the yeah, gods, no, obviously, no. but yeah, they still had their part. They were part of the show. Yeah. Um, you were dancing amongst them at one point, or not necessarily you, but yeah, the cast. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they were they were part of it. Um, so that's why I love these shows. Like, there's no, uh, there's not an ensemble part. Like, yeah. I feel the ensemble no. are very much sometimes overlooked. Yeah. And with but without them, there's there's no but because without, without them, this show we wouldn't have been able to do it. Hundred like, percent. Yeah. 100%. Everyone was incredible. Like, I I have to sing the praises of basically everyone in that show was so good at what they did. You know, and it was an honour to work with all of them. Right. Right. So. Thank you very much, Daniel, once again for, for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, having you on as, a, as our first chat. Uh, so thank you, thank you very much. No, thank you. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. Um, if you liked the video, please uh, donate, what you, if you can, if you can, and what you can to the charity. The link below uh, is in the bio. Um, and tune in next time where I've chat. Uh, our chat will be Matt Duggan uh, and the real Kevin, who plays him, uh, who he plays on Come From Away. So join us then. But thanks once again, Daniel. Take That's care. Right.